Okay, let's go ahead and get ourselves started. Today we are going to follow a slightly different path than usual. We're going to go through and, uh, and do a lot of looking at views and how to create different views, how to adjust uh, kind of the properties of the different views, and really get done with a lot of the things that would be helpful for you for completing assignment one. And we'll do that all kind of in one big old chunk kind of towards the front. And then we'll take our break and use the latter part of what's going on just for questions and answers. And the TAs will be here and we'll try to give you some individual guidance with your projects. Now, as we're working through uh, the different examples today, if you want to be working with your own project, your own assignment one project, please do. Because everything I'll be doing about you know, creating views and cutting and moving things around and adjusting the appearance of the views, it doesn't really matter whether you do it with my example or with your example. So you might as well just be working with your example if you have it handy so that you can go ahead and uh, work with it. As we get started, though, before we get started, let's take a look at this. Uh, Derek, who's one of our undergrads, is conducting a little experiment on the whole notion of crowdsourcing. And that's sort of an interesting concept that's going on right now of just really uh, what letting a lot of different people contribute to a design process and sort of see what the results are of doing that. So out on the L drive, you'll find a folder. It's really at the top of the L drive. It's zero crowdsourcing example where he's just sort of laid out a little exercise here that involves using SketchUp and doing a little uh, kind of changing around of like a basic Rubik's Cube sort of structure. So uh, if you can, if you would be willing to participate in this experiment, just open that up. I think SketchUp is uh, available on most of the machines here in this room. But uh, working with the push-pull tool, go ahead and just try deforming the cube a little bit. And then ultimately uh, kind of turn it in. I'm not sure exactly what he's going for, but I don't want to bias sort of where you go with your design experimentation either. So I'll just sort of say it's available here. And if you have some time between classes or just at some point just to play around a little bit, go ahead and take a look at that if you can. And uh, you'll just be helping someone else with a, kind of an interesting little research project. But there's this whole notion of uh, how we can all be working on designing problems as separate pieces that would come together. And this is just sort of uh, in service of that. So if you can, take a look at that. OK, in terms of what we are going to be doing today, let me pop on over to the PowerPoint, and we'll get started. And why is that not? There it is. Looking like it's doing it. Let's talk about model views for just a little bit. The idea behind really where we're going today is as follows. We've been creating these models, putting all these different elements in our models, walls and floors and roofs and things like that. And now it's time to go through and create some views that use that model to present views that are going to be useful to people. So there are all sorts of things that are, uh, you know, views can be created for all sorts of different purposes. And as we get started, it's, I think it's sort of important to figure out for all of the different views you're creating, what are you trying to show in that view? What is really the answer? What is the question that you're trying to answer with presenting that information? Because you'll find that we can create an arbitrarily large number of views, but not all are going to be useful. So rather than sort of ask, you know, creating every view exhaustively, think about which ones are going to really answer the questions you need to get answered. Like, there's this whole question of very early on when we're planning a project, does this design meet my requirements? So we want to know what is it we've designed, how big is it, and there's certain features of the model that will be helpful for answering that. In terms of explaining to people what it is you've designed, the floor plans, maybe some 3D views, some elevations, that'll help explain what your design is, how big is it, you'll need to add dimensions to your design, or scale objects to help people understand, is it enough room to pass around your tables and chairs? You'll need to sort of answer some of those things. You know, can I build it? Does it fit within the planning restrictions? We can create all sorts of schedules and sort of annotations on top of the elevation views to figure out, is it meeting with all the, within the planning restrictions? Is it the right number of square feet? Did it exceed any ratios? Is it you know, casting shadows on any other buildings? You know, can I afford it? Really, you know, how will it be built? We can look at building sections typically to illustrate, and details to illustrate how things will be built. And we can even sort of do little schedules where we try to estimate the cost of building things. And these are all sort of just steps along the way of really you know, different types of views you create to answer different questions. Okay. As you're going through and working, okay, it's important that you really think about the views that are going to best sell your design. Because 
If you go through and you put together a plan set that has 15 different sheets with every view known to man, it's really confusing to people to sort of figure out what it is you thought was most important. So rather than putting every view possible on the sheets, especially as you're presenting your design early on, you know, really think about really what's going to really sell the design the best. Typically, we like to have floor plans at each level, which include context and dimensions and some annotations. For a lot of things, in terms of early design reviews, you may not need to include the roof plan. Okay. As a construction person, I'd like to know what the roof plan looks like, but the roof plan may not be necessary when you're presenting to your clients because they don't tend to perceive things from that view, unless you're sort of looking at it from a helicopter view. For elevations, you probably have of all your elevations, oh, one or two that are really the strongest. I think I'd characterize it of all the designs I've seen so far. You've probably designed it so one or two are your strongest size, and the other ones are kind of just around the back somewhere. So go ahead and present me the elevations that are selling your design. Give us the strong ones. Uh, sections, it's often good to have sections. If you have some sort of sloping, clear story roof or something interesting, you know, make sure you put a section in there that'll really help to explain what's going on there. Some 3D views. We can do camera perspectives, which are sort of more natural, as well as kind of helicopter views. We'll show you how to do both of those. And also, there's this notion of schedules, key quantities that'll help provide the answers, numeric answers to some of the questions. And we'll look at how to create schedules that sum up things like, oh, the total amount of glazing area, or the total square footage in the building, things like that. So always be sort of aware of these different sort of views and what you're including them for. And then these steps, because for each of the different model views that we're going to create, there's really an order of operations that'll sort of guarantee your success. It all starts with really just choosing a camera position and a view range to sort of show the right thing. So you got to sort of, for every different view, put your camera where you want it to be, look in the right direction, and tell me how far, how deep you want to be looking from that perspective. OK, and we'll start with that. Just putting cameras in different places and adjusting the view range. Okay. Once we've got a camera position in the right position, it's all this notion of really filtering or highlighting elements of particular interest. So we can filter out things we don't want to see or highlight things that we really want to draw your attention to. Okay. So the model has so many different layers of information, and we're going to work with this notion of visibility graphic overrides to customize what's uh, highlighted. Then we can add some annotations. Given that all the model elements are shown, we might want to add some dimensions, add some text strings, just annotations to help explain what's going on. Because although a picture is worth a 1,000 words, every once in a while, a couple words sort of like help explain what that blob is over in the corner. Oh, that was the TV. You know, because it may not be entirely obvious looking at the 3D representation. And don't be afraid of words. Sometimes a few well-placed words will save you a half hour of trying to model something. You know, if all you're really trying to tell me is that there'll be an entertainment <coughs> center in the corner. I can imagine one, just with the word entertainment center there. Okay. Finally, we'll look at things that let you sort of enhance the appearance. So things like just really adjusting the color, whether the shadows, whether the shading, and the whole notion of can it fit on the sheets? Because by default, the views are sort of just you know, infinitely large to encompass all the model elements. When it comes time to fit them on sheets, though, you'll have to set a scale and crop the boundaries to actually get them to fit as a viewport onto a sheet. So those are the four basic steps. And for all the different views, it's going to be those same four basic steps kind of working through. So OK as a starting point. Then let us go ahead and talk about plan views and really all the things we can do to plan views to make them work. And to get started with this, how about if we go over to Revit, and you can open up uh, yours if you want to, or you can open up uh, the one that I put out there. There's out on the coursework server, you will find, oh, let me find out there. You'll find a couple examples there. I've also put them out there on the L drive, if you want to just download them there, under session five. You'll find the getting started house, and that's probably a good place to get going. So if you want to pull it off the L drive, or you want to put it off coursework, either way, why don't you see if you can open up just some model. Again, you can use your model just as easily as mine. Don't really worry about which model it is you're using. You just need to have something that we can work with and start playing with. So I'm going to open up Revit. And this is what the getting started house looks like. Let me just kind of show you a 3D view. Okay, Just sort of a simple little two-story space. But let's talk about the different views and what we can do. I think it's just being slow. Pop back in there. Nope. Okay, 
in terms of the plan views, every different floor level has a plan view. And if we would like to create additional floor plans, what we can do is duplicate one of the existing plan views and rename it. Kind of like what we've been doing with all the type things. Choose something, duplicate it, rename it. And the reason we might want to do that is that as we go through and try to customize views to show specific things, we may not want to show all the information in all of the views. Um, we may want to have sort of specific information shown to different people. But let's go ahead and start with the whole notion of duplicating, and then we'll like uh, kind of see how you can actually start adjusting some of these things. So I'm going to go over like the level one floor plan view. Okay, and this level one floor plan view is going to have. Let me zoom on in there a little bit. Okay, uh, basically all the walls, the stairways, things like that. That's all what's shown right here in the view today, or right now. So as we look at this view, let's talk about a little about sort of the whole notion of oh, you know, pardon me. You might want to turn that off. Okay, uh, we'll talk about really how we can kind of customize the view range and duplicating this view. Let's start with duplicating it. I got the level one floor plan view. By default, the level one floor plan view, it's showing pretty much most of the model elements, and it's also cut at this level four foot six above the plane, or four feet above the, the floor plane. If we want to duplicate that view, it's really as simple as come on over to level one in the browser, right click on that, and you can say duplicate it. And when we duplicate it, we have a couple different choices there. The ones that I'm going to draw your attention to are duplicate and duplicate with detailing. Let's talk about what those two do. Duplicate says, let's take this view and all the model elements that are visible in it and duplicate that so we can see them in another view. Duplicate with detailing says, let's take the model and all the elements that are visible in it, as well as the annotations, which include these dimension lines, these some markers which indicate the doors and windows, and we'll duplicate and include those things. So the big issue is really, are you getting just the model, or are you also getting the annotations? Okay, and you can kind of choose. If you've already put a lot of di uh, dimensions in there and you want to carry them forward into the other view, do it with the uh, uh, detailing. And you can always take out the things you don't want because annotations are specific to a single view. If you delete annotations in one view, it won't delete them in the other view. Okay, so you just sort of decide which way you want to go. For example, I will duplicate. And duplicating is giving me level one just with the model only. Let me just change the name to reinforce that. I'll call that level one, model only. So duplicate something like that. Now we'll also go back and we'll open that level one again. And we'll try duplicating it with the annotations. So to do that, we'll say duplicate the view. But this time, say duplicate with the detailing. And if you duplicate with the detailing, It'll copy all those dimensions and all those tags with it, too. And I'll rename that one just so I can have that. I'll call it level one dimensioned. Now, I'm going to encourage you to start creating a lot of different versions of your floor plan views for your different purposes. Because as you go through and work, you're going to sort of need to show information to different people. You'll also need to sort of just keep on adjusting things based upon what it is you're trying to control in the view. And if you find yourself going to the view properties more than one or two times, it's probably a pretty good idea, or it's telling you something. It's telling you that you might want to create another view with a different set of properties. Yeah, you don't want to keep on going back to view properties and changing, then go back and confirm and back and keep on going back and forth. Just create additional views. Views are free, you know, so you don't have to put them all on your sheets. But be, think about not only views that are going to be helpful to present the information, but also views that are going to be helpful for you as you work. Because both things are sort of appropriate. Okay, so creating a new duplicated uh, floor plan view is actually a pretty easy thing. Let's pop back over here. We can create these things. Uh, if we want to create some additional floor plan views, let me show you what that looks like. For now, you'll see that for each of the different floor levels, it's automatically created a level one or a level two view. It's created those for you just by default. When you create a new level, it'll put a floor plan view in there. In fact, let me go ahead and I'll just put in another floor, another, another level, and uh, 
show you what it does in terms of creating another floor plan for us. For example, I can go to the south elevation. Well, actually, we already have some that we don't have floor plans for, do we? Railing, no, we have floor plans for all those different views right now. Let me go ahead and put in another level and then show you what that might look like. If I put in another level, I'll just squeeze it in right at hit this point. I'll call it level six. <coughs> You'll notice that there's this choice up here of whether or not to make a plan view. And if you have that turned on, level six shows up and it, a floor plan view is created automatically for you. Now, if you've created the floor plan level or the levels beforehand, let me take out that level. And for whatever reason, a floor plan view hasn't been created for you. You can always go back and add it later. There's really no harm in doing that. And to do that, what you do is you say view. And then under the view tab, there's this uh, view right here, or this tool right here called plan views. And if we choose the plan views, we can choose whether it's a floor plan, a ceiling plan, or an area plan. We'll choose floor plan. And it'll say, OK, show me the different levels that you want to create a floor plan view for, and what scale should they be at? Now, right now, this is looking pretty empty because this do not duplicate the existing views is checked on right now. So we already have views for all the different floor levels. But you can turn that off. And I can say, give me another view at the roof level at quarter scale or whatever scale is appropriate. Okay. And I'll just create a second roof view that way. So you have two different options. You can either go through and duplicate an existing one, or you can go to this tool and create things. Either way, it really sort of gets you to the same place. Once you've gone through and created these views, let's pop back over here. Okay. We're going to go ahead and start talking about how we can highlight and filter the different elements that are sort of showing up in the view. Actually, even in that view, yeah, let's do that first. OK, let's go ahead and take a look at this issue. And here's where I want to go with that. Let's come back over here to the model. I got level one. I got the model only. Great. So let me pop back over here. I got these walls. They're all looking good. I got a stairway. They're looking good. Let me put a little furniture in here, just so we sort of have a little bit something different to work with. To do that, you may have been doing this with your own model. I'll place some components. And what do I have in here? I got a desk. I'll throw that in. Maybe the desk will go right here. Actually, that looks more like the dining room, but I won't worry about that too much. I'll place another component in here. Let's see if I can find a nice chair, trees, nothing like that. So maybe I'll load a family instead. I'll say load a family, and I'll go to my furniture. And oh, there's that Corbusier chair we all like so much. We'll bring that one in. I'll kind of put it over here. Maybe I'll put another one over here. As I'm placing these things, if you hit the spacebar key, you'll rotate through some different options. You can either do that as you're placing them, or you can do it after the fact. Either way, oops, let me put that back in there again. I didn't click. Place the component. Here's the Corbusier chair. I'll hit the spacebar and rotate it, and I'll finally click it into place. And I'm just placing some furniture in there. OK, so I'm starting to have some different elements in here. In fact, why don't I go through and do something else? I'll go to columns. Nah, I'll leave it at this for now. OK. We got a view. It has model elements. It has furniture elements, as well as it has all these sort of uh, wall elements. So let's talk about now sort of highlighting specific types of elements in different views. So for example, in the plans that I want to give to the contractor, he probably doesn't want to see the furniture. On the other hand, to the homeowners or to the interior designer, they probably want to see the furniture and sort of have that highlighted to them. So let's talk about how we can do that. If I take this model only view, let me duplicate that one. And I'm going to say this is going to be, oh, level one. And I can call it no furniture, or I can call it walls only, or However you want to sort of title it, it's really just going to be, you should always give them just sort of a name that refers to how you want to think about it. OK. I have something called no furniture. However, there's furniture in there. How do I get rid of that furniture? OK. And how you get rid of the furniture is, again, don't delete it, because if you delete it, it'll be deleted in the entire model. 
Instead, what you want to do is for the view is adjust something for the view called the visibility graphics. And let's take a look at that dialog. So switch to the view tab. Can you switch to the view tab? Choose visibility graphics. And in visibility graphics, you'll find there's a whole host of different categories out there, different model categories. And you can turn on and turn off anything in this view. So this is the whole notion. Every part that we put in there had some sort of a category associated with it. This is very much like layers. If you turn off the layers or you turn off the category associated with things you do or don't want to see, we can make them disappear. So for example, I could turn off the furniture and just have it not show up at all. I just did that by clicking and turning off the checkbox, saying OK, and the furniture doesn't seem to be there. In model only, it's still there. It's just not in this view. And the reason is visibility graphics is really a view property. It's on a view by view basis. So we can sort of turn things on, turn things off, and all the different views. So let me also go back to visibility graphics. Now, I use visibility graphics a lot. So I'll just kind of encourage you to use the shortcut. It's VG. If you just type VG, it'll open that dialog really quickly for you. Just typing VG. OK. And if I instead would like to have the furniture just half toned, I'll make it visible, but just half tone it. That'll make it, uh, oh, it'll be there, but just a little grayer. OK, it's there, but just not as obvious in terms of what's going on. You can sort of control what it is you want to see and don't want to see. So in this view, OK, the furniture's turned down a little bit right now. Oh, what else do we want to do? Let's go ahead and try a different view. Actually, I will turn the furniture back off, VG. Go to furniture. I'll just turn it off completely. Okay. Let me try a different sort of view. And that would be, I'll go back to the level one again. And I'll duplicate that. Let's create something that actually highlights the furniture. So going in the opposite direction. So I have another view. And I'll rename that. Level one furniture plan. Now, for this view, I not only want to show the furniture, but what if we really like do something to make that furniture stand out so it's achingly obvious where the furniture is and the other things are a little bit less obvious? And how we can do that is as follows. We can, in the furniture plan view, go to visibility graphics again. And within visibility graphics, we've got the furniture still, but there's this notion of overrides for the different furniture pieces or any of the different categories. So we can change the projection style or the cut line style for any of the different pieces, kind of giving them a different color or a lighter line weight, or giving them a very obvious color and a heavy line weight. You can really kind of control that. Again, it's just going to be in that one view, not affecting the other views. So if I really want to emphasize those fur that furniture, I can say, you know, I want that to be in red. What's that? I'm sorry? Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> I always do this stuff and then like, uh, like get myself in trouble. And why didn't that work? Thank you. Always correct me when you see stuff like that. OK, and then I could even choose a line weight, a really heavy line weight. What you need to know about line weights for now is that one is thin, you know, five is medium, nine is getting fat, 15 is extraordinarily fat. There's actually like real millimeter like uh, line weights to that. We can show you where that is. But for now, oh, seven's kind of pretty heavy. Say OK. And all of a sudden, those elements are really being highlighted. So I won't go through all the examples, but I want you to start thinking about how you can use this. If you really want to, on your structural plans, highlight all the structural elements in a brighter color, or highlight all the steel elements in a color versus the wood elements in a color, you can really start playing with this to really uh, customize the view. Yeah. Yep. One of them, yep. Is gonna change it all of it? A very good question. <laughs> Let's take a poll. Because actually, yeah, since it's all views of the model in terms of what's going on, I want to make it. That's, that's just kind of corny. But Danny, yeah, I'll answer your question directly. Yes, if you change the model, uh, what's happening now? I must have my wall sort of conflicting with a doorway or something like that. But in those views, the model's changing. Anything you do to change the model will change in all the views. That's the beauty of this. No, exactly. So even in terms of I'm on the furniture plan, 
and I decide that I want to move this uh, desk over to this side of the room instead, if I go back to any of the views, the level one view, any of the views, any change to the model is fundamentally going to change. So changes to any model elements change everywhere. Changes to annotations don't change everywhere. Okay, so let me kind of show you what that means. So for example, here I've got these dimensions okay, on the level one view. Here I got this dimensioned level one view. So that's a duplicate copy of it, but it has the annotations copied too. So watch this. If I go through and move that dimension, or even take out that tag for the door, okay, it won't change in the other view because annotations are local where model elements are global. Okay, so you get your choice about which way you want to do that. So this whole notion of filtering views, taking out things you want to, don't want to see and highlighting things you do want to see, really, really strong. So go ahead and kind of remember that one because it's going to apply to all the different views as we go working through. Okay, let's take a look at something else. Popping in over here. Okay, as you're setting the visibility graphics, note that Dialog actually has three different tabs to it. It has model categories, those are the things that are going to affect and canary across all the different views. There's annotation categories. You can just turn off specific annotations in one specific view. So I could turn off the dimensions in a view. I can turn off the tags. Even though I've placed them, I can turn them on and off. We could also turn on and off imported categories. That's good if you bring in like a DWG file or you bring in another model file, like an XREF that you're using underneath your drawing. You can decide whether you want to have it visible or not have it visible. So really, all these different things are available to you. 